I am Dr. Marcus Schmidt. And I'm Dr. Helmut Schmidt. Today we're going to talk about nasal congestion, uh, one of the most common problems that patients using nasal CPAP have. In fact, nasal congestion is one of the most common reasons that patients have difficulty utilizing their CPAP. We're going to go over several tips that patients can use to really combat this problem. In fact, one needs to recognize actually that chronic nasal congestion is very common in patients with sleep disorder breathing. They come in with that already. So this is something that needs to be addressed right off the, right off the bat. And some of those patients may actually do better with CPAP once they get on CPAP with their nasal congestion. Exactly. I find that the vast majority of patients, if hum humidification is used properly, and often it's, it is not, uh, they can do very well with, uh, with uh, their nasal problems, with no nasal congestion, and uh, don't have to run to the, to the ear nose throat specialist right away, wait until the CPAP is adjusted properly and you've got the proper humidification and how to use that. I think that's the first point, is really maximizing the humidification. I tell my patients to utilize the humidifier and to know how to change the humidification setting. A lot of patients have absolutely no idea how to do that. They get the CPAP, from the home care company, and no one's really gone over that with them. And it's very important that the patient is taught how to, how to recognize that, to, how to change it, how to adjust it, the summer versus winter. It's not unusual at all that I find that patients who develop a bad cold, they actually stop using CPAP. And, that, and they may in fact be told by the home care company not to use CPAP when they get bad a bad cold. That's the wrong advice. What you need actually is more external moisture to eliminate the, the production of the internal moisture that makes, it, makes the congestion a lot worse for you. I think four times a year is what I tell my patients that they really should be looking at changing their humidification setting. Highest in the winter, lowest in the summer, and somewhere in between for spring and fall. Some patients have problems with the humidifier when they try to go up on that humidification setting that in the winter they get a lot of condensation in the hose and you may get some gurgling noises, etc. That's often mistaken for snoring or other kinds of difficulty with breathing when in fact it is not. It can sound sometimes a little similar. Now, if that happens, what I recommend for patients is to pass the hose underneath the covers. The covers help keep the hose warm and minimize that condensation. The other thing is that you can do is actually, if this is the head of the bed and this is the CPAP, is to lower the CPAP, lower than the head of the bed. That way, any condensation that occurs in the hose simply flows back into the reservoir. If there is condensation in the, in the hose, it needs to be able to run downhill. It's not going to run uphill, obviously. It needs to be able to run downhill, so the CPAP unit needs to be just a touch maybe below the mattress level. That's right. Yes. Not on the floor. I think there's, if there is dust around, it's going to be more likely to be on the floor and you're going to suck that in. You don't want that. Some of our patients, we have them use what's called a cozy. The home care company has that. It's a little cloth that goes around the hose. It's got a Velcro along the, the, the hose itself, keeps it in place. Some people use that. That's another potential option. Uh, and finally, if nasal congestion, in spite of all these interventions, still continues to be a problem, some patients may need to get a nasal spray, such as a steroidal nasal spray. I really recommend not using the over-the-counter uh, afrin type nasal sprays because that can actually, using that more than three days in a row, can actually make the problem worse. Uh, I think that's about the extent of the, anything else you'd like to recommend? Well, I'm, again, I want to emphasize that you don't need to get an ENT evaluation right away for that. Let the, let the humidification process work for you, and you may find out, and more often than not, in my experience, the vast majority of time, it actually works very well and the patient does not have any, any, any problem with congestion or runny nose. If you have runny nose, sneezing, bleeding, congestion, stuffiness, all these things indicate you need more external moisture and you, you've got to be able to provide that. And if everything's going well with no problems with congestion or dryness, then you can turn down the humidif humidification. I think if all of these things fail, you know, some patients may require uh, seeing an ear, nose and throat physician, but that should be the exception. The other thing to remember that if you max it out, put it up all the way, it's not going to hurt you. But some people think that you're going to get more bacteria in because of this thing blown into your the bacteria are not carried with the, with the fine droplets that the, that the moisture comes in. There is no danger of, of having any lung problems or other kinds of damage done to you. If you max it out, it may get a little moist around the nasal area, but it's not going to hurt you. I hope that was helpful.